I'm actually so excited to film this video. Um, I do videos like this but for Netflix all the time and Disney is one of my favourite things in the world so I am really excited that I now get to film these for Disney Plus as well. I've got my best Disney top on and a cute little scrunchie and today we're just going to talk through some of my recommendations for Disney Plus so far and also quite a lot of people have asked me whether I think it's worth the money and um, so I'm going to be addressing that at the end as well but I just sort of thought that we would talk through some of the things that I've had the most fun watching so far. Obviously this is a fairly new platform to the UK so there's so much on there that I haven't had the chance to see yet and I fully intend to make my way through all of it but these are just some favourites out of the things that I have already seen. I try to include quite a few different genres um, and think kind of a little bit outside the box rather than sort of sitting here and saying Beauty and the Beast because even though I love Beauty and the Beast like you know Beauty and the Beast is going to be on Disney Plus if you want to watch Beauty and the Beast you can do that without me telling you it's good. However all that being said I'm only just one person um, obviously I have my own opinions but I will like things that you don't like and I won't like things that you do so is that, did I say that the right way around? I think so. So my favourite thing about these kinds of videos is when you guys leave your suggestions in the comments as well because presumably everybody who's watching this video is watching it because they're looking for Disney Plus recommendations. So if you would like to leave a comment with your favourite thing that you've watched this far, so far, or three of your favourite things that you've watched so far, um, then we can all help each other out in the comments and that will be lovely. Also, I'm still looking for recommendations, so I will appreciate that too. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you find it at all helpful. Um, it really helps me out and it helps other people to see it, as well as telling me what kind of thing you would like to see more of, whether I should make more Disney Plus themed videos. And also, if you are new to my channel, please hit subscribe. I would love to have you around. And with all that admin done, let's crack on with the list. The first on my list is actually a documentary, and it's the, the thing that I was the most excited to watch when Disney Plus first launched and that is the Imagineering story. Um, I'm a huge fan of Disneyland and Disney World um, and to be honest with having to stay inside more I've been focusing far too much of my energy on Disney World. <laughs> so I knew that I really wanted to watch this and basically it's a documentary about Walt Disney and his Imagineers and um, kind of how he chose them and how he pulled them all together and um, how the Disneyland California Park came to be. And it's a really interesting documentary. I will say that it is not that dissimilar to things that they have in Disney World, like, um, oh, what is it called now? Is it called Walt Disney Presents? It used to be called One Man's Dream. They show like a similar, um, it tells that story basically. And I love One Man's Dream. It is my favourite attraction or definitely one of my favourites. And so kind of to have a little piece of that to watch at home was really nice. It was really cool to see Walt talking through his plans and his dreams. And it's so lovely to know what they have turned into. Um, and so yeah, I think if you're interested in the house of Disneyland and Disney World and Disney as a company I would really recommend watching The Imagineering Story I think it's like an hour long um yeah I just really enjoyed it it says that it's episode one so I hope there's gonna be more next up is 10 things I hate about you for some reason I didn't really think about the fact that this kind of stuff would also be available on Disney plus and to be honest like high school rom-com is one of my favorite film genres <laughs> So I was really excited to see this. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's like a, um, a 90s high school rom-com. <laughs> um, it's, it's brilliant. It's based on The Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. That sounds like a really way, weird way of saying that. It's based on Shakespeare's play, The Taming of the Shrew. Um, and it's just great. Obviously there's some really incredible 90s style going on in there. It's got a really good soundtrack. It's very feel good. Um, very mushy if you're into like rom-coms and lovey-dovey stuff. Sometimes it makes me want to vomit a bit. But um, I really enjoyed watching it. I had a really good time. The other night just doing my bullet journal and watching 10 Things I Hate About You. And then realising rapidly that I'm turning into somewhat of a cliche. <laughs> But yeah, would absolutely recommend watching that if you're in the mood for something a bit cheesy. Now, the next thing I say with a heavy heart <laughs> it is High School Musical, the musical, the series. I expected to hate this. 
I expected to watch the first 10 minutes of it and be like, this is awful, I can't watch it anymore, I'm turning it off. As somebody who was peak age for High School Musical when it came out and absolutely loved it, um, I really expected to hate this and I don't, question mark. It's not good, but I do enjoy it. <laughs> you know the best thing to compare it to? Glee. There's some songs in there, um, it's very typecast, it's trash, but for some reason you keep watching because it is feel good. Less of the comedy than Glee, to be fair, um, but it's a similar kind of cheese. <laughs> Personally, I do wish that they'd gone for slightly less obvious casting. Um, they did try to do this to a certain extent with a, a young boy playing Sharpay, but I do just think that like each of... I need to explain what it is in case you don't know. Basically, High School Musical the Musical the Series is like a TV series about East High, the current kids of East High who are putting on High School Musical. So it's all very meta. But yeah, they've the the casting of the characters as the High School Musical characters is so clear from the off um, that it's like almost painful. The girl that's playing Gabriella looks like she'd be playing Gabriella. The boy that's playing Troy looks like he'd be playing Troy. The girl who's playing Miss Darbus looks like she'd be playing Miss Darbus. I do just wish that there was a little bit more variation there. Um, but what are you gonna do? But overall, I mean, I've watched both episodes that have come out so far. This one's coming out weekly. Just to keep you on the edge of the seat. Next up, number four, I think, on this list, is my favourite musical of all time, Newsies. So Newsies, for those of you who don't know, which is a lot of people, maybe less so in the US, but in the UK, Newsies is really not a very well-known musical at all because we've never had it here. Um, so Newsies is about some newspaper boys in the turn of the century, I think it's set in 1901, and they are being exploited by the newspapers um, in terms of like their money and their living conditions and things like that, and so they have a revolution, and it is brilliant. It's such a good show. I saw it on Broadway for my 18th birthday, and it was the best show I've ever seen, and I think it still is. Um, it is just my favourite musical in the whole world and it is that one piece of media that I wish I could show to everyone. It's so good. But there are two versions of Newsies on Netflix. The first is the film. The film was made ages ago and it stars a very young Christian Bale and I like it but it's not as good as the Broadway live recording that it's actually not that live, but whatever, that was recorded a couple of years ago now, starring Jeremy Jordan, the love of my life, and it's just incredible. So if you are partial to a musical and you haven't yet seen Newsies, or if you know of Newsies and haven't had a chance to see it, or if you love Newsies and you want to watch it anyway, then I would really recommend watching the Broadway version of Newsies. It's incredible. Other musicals that I'm very excited to watch are Once Upon a Mattress, which I've never seen and never heard, and um, The Little Mermaid Live, which I've wanted to watch for ages and I haven't had a chance to yet, but I'm saving it for a rainy day. And the last on my list comes from, the other night I was really in the mood to watch like a murder mystery um, and I thought, oh, they're not gonna have that on Disney Plus. And then I realised they have Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is great. It's not exactly gritty, is it? It's quite dated, but it scratched the itch. Scratched the itch that phrase? Obviously there are so many films that I haven't included in this list and TV series because it's only a little list and there are so many and I haven't included any of the classics or anything like that because you know the Disney classics and you know what you should be watching. I would really recommend Moana if you haven't seen it but um, I assume you have. If not you wouldn't really be watching this. In conclusion though, is it worth it? Well, it depends on your viewing habits. There is nearly every Disney film you can think of on here. All of the classics, all of the MCU movies, all of the Star Wars movies, not that I've ever watched them. Disney Channel originals, Camp Rock, Starstruck, all the classics. 
it does have so much to offer. I'm loving it and I'm making it my personal mission to make it through the entire catalogue while I'm stuck indoors. My plan is to be able to honestly say that I have watched every Disney film as an adult. Um, but I think I could be here a while. I will say that I do think they've got their work cut out for them maintaining interest from an adult audience after the first kind of novel element of it has worn off because they're basing their entire business model on a back catalogue of old films which I'll be interested to see how that plays out because while there is original stuff on the platform Disney can't make like sitcoms or um, dramas that would appeal to an adult audience so much or maybe they can but they haven't yet I'd be interested to see if they ever add the ABC family lineup to this because that had like Pretty Little Liars, The Fosters, stuff like that but we'll see what happens they're Disney I'm sure they've got a plan and actually that being said at least once a week if not more I always want to watch like a Disney film or a Marvel film or Jonas Brothers concert <laughs> And so would I pay £6 a month for that? Yeah. Even if I only watch it once a week, that's £1.50 a go. Okay, I've just talked myself out of my whole opinion. I think it is worth it. <laughs> but anyway, those were my Disney Plus recommendations. Um, let me know what yours are in the comments. And as I said, I'm trying to make it through everything. I have started, this is how I watched 10 Things I Hate About You the other night. I clicked on movies A to Z and I'm just gonna make my way through. So I've got 101 Dalmatians to watch today. <laughs> um, the only exception to that is I'm not gonna watch the MCU movies in that lineup because they'll all be out of order. So I'm gonna do them in order. But anyway, um, oh, and the Star Wars. Actually, that's quite a, that. That's quite a flawed idea. We'll see what happens. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I will probably post more of these. If you guys like this one, give me a thumbs up to let me know if you did. And I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>